Hello everyone, and welcome back to a new episode of Prismata. Uh, in the last episode, we finished off our first uh, ranked play ticket, and I noticed that uh, my master rating is about staying the same. Like, okay, the number displayed here is sort of immaterial, but you know, the vacation penalty is going away, and so this number is going up. But uh, the true rating here, I feel like I started at 1644, so like I'm arguably not worse than I was. Like. 1650 is still a pretty bad ranking, no question. But it's just, like, not as bad as I thought I would be. Anyway, um... We have these, like, platinum and gold tickets. And I guess there's no reason not to use them, since you always get the reward, as long as you can scrape together three wins in a week. If I can't manage that, I don't deserve the reward. Um... And I wonder, though, like, I, so far I'm not really a big fan of the bonus unit cards. As far as I can tell, all these do is just, like, add one more unit to the set. And honestly, the fewer units there are in sets, the happier I am, because I just can't analyze complicated sets very well yet. And I'm trying to figure out, is there, like, it says bonus unit cards, an additional get unit is added. But is there some reason, like, would I get another medal if there were bonus units added? I don't think so. So I'm just not going to do that. I'm, I'm going to like... But 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 I can imagine that I might later say, I'd like to do a base plus five only, but throw in a bunch of bonus units and end up with a bunch of plus sixes and plus sevens or something. That could be fun. So I think I'll hang on to this platinum guy. Just like, doesn't really matter. That's my explanation for why I'm doing it. Whatever. We're going to use up a golden one here and try to get a few games in. And uh, probably lose more than half of them, but hopefully not a lot more than half. As uh, so, as, as I get a little bit more practice, I played a lot of like Masterbot recently because I was doing stuff where, well, basically because I wanted to watch TV and well, I say TV, right? Twitch and YouTube and stuff. Um, while I played, and it's just, uh, so I had a good, like, winning streak here that I'm feeling okay about. Some of these wins are pretty questionable, like, uh, I don't know. Obviously the losses are especially bad, but there was, there were at least one win where the guy, Masterbot, had the win and, like, just misplayed in the ending. Anyway, uh, we have a real game now. What's this all about? Looks like, uh, Big Blue is probably good, even with Endotherm Kit, if I had to guess. Maybe you go Trinity of Steris? With Barrier? An endotherm? No, endotherm's no good. I don't think breach proof is good, even with Trinity and Asteri, because Big Blue is just going to put out too much pressure with Energy Matrix and Drake. Not pressure, right? Breach Proof doesn't care about pressure, but too much attack. I think the Big Blue is going to do better than breach proof green. Now the question is, can you do something with red that makes Big Blue sad? Like endotherm kit is really sad for Big Blue generally. Um, so you might want to go for, like, a lot of drones, mainly, like, these guys, but mix in, like, one and, uh, one conduit, and, uh, and try getting an animus just to, like, build efficient attackers. So maybe you would just go two blue, skip the steel splitter, uh, omega splitters, get energy matrix and drakes, and, like, Animus conduit to try to push this stuff out. Forget the Omega Splitters. They're not that much more efficient attackers than just Steel Splitters, which are not great. Whereas Drake is, like, a pretty sweet attacker because it threatens a bit of extra breach. I don't think you would go Drake against... Green? Against Green, you might prefer to do something else. What is this? Cut Drone to go Blast Forge. Why? Why are you not going high econ? What's the deal? Is he thinking that it loses to endotherm kit? But I think you can do both, right? Like, he's he's not doing that, and I guess that his plan is to, like, see if I go third NG and try something really aggressive to punish me? I don't think that works. I hope it doesn't work, because I'm going to do it, right? We're going to do this, and then triple, end, triple drone conduit, triple drone blast forge. 
And like, I guess he must at this point think that I've fallen into his trap, and I hope he's wrong. But I'm still not sure what his plan is. Is he gonna try to go breach proof? It seems like he should have put in some more conduits earlier, if so. He is, okay. So my green is less effective than it might otherwise have been. All right, he sees, he sees that I'm like signaling energy matrix and he wants to get out an endotherm kit early and go breach proof. Fine. Oh, he just concedes. What? I think that there was still some play in that. I, I don't know what the right answer to this set was. Like, it seemed like kind of a rock, paper, scissors thing in between, like, well, I don't know. So I was thinking that Big Blue has some trouble with, like, green, red. But with Big Blue, you, you can only go, you can go just two blues and then mix in some green, red yourself, which is what I was sort of trying to do. And I still hadn't really decided whether I was building the red first or the blue first. Probably red first is better, um, but a bit harder to do because it doesn't fit into your build so naturally, right? Like, oops, geez. My next thing, I have 14 gold. I was going to build three drones and a blast forge, uh, which is pretty natural. But maybe I should just build two drones and an animus so that I can build efficient attackers while getting energy matrix a bit more gradually. And, like, also get... Well, I'm not going to build the endotherm kit when I see him go green-red. I don't think... Well... Red is really sensitive to breach, even more than, like, energy matrix. So, I think Endotherm Kit is a big deal in this set. No matter what you do. Unless your opponent goes like pure mono green, then of course forget the Endotherm Kit. But, I don't think mono green wins here. You can like beat it with just red blue, basically. Hmm. All right, well, we won that game. That was nice, I guess. It's too bad I didn't get to see how it plays out. Would have liked that, but let's queue up for another. Nice, nice, quick, like, five-minute game. Less than that, really, because I spent so much time talking. It can't have been more than, like, a two-, two or three-minute game. I don't know what made him resign. Like, I think we played that guy once before and we beat him. Like, maybe our first ranked game ever. Uh, but I don't remember for sure. Ah, he responds in the chat and says, wasn't paying attention at all. Well, I, don't know. I was gonna try and tell him what I think, but I guess he just like agrees with me that high econ is the way to go and didn't notice it, uh, and then resigned when I went for it. But I think he could try at least to pressure with endotherm kit and electrovores. Right, was there any other support for that? Yeah, I mean, just like, maybe a Asteris if that's what he wants. I don't know, it seems weird. It, it seems like it's still not lost, even if you've taken a weird tech choice. You could try to make it work. Although it must be said that Breach Proof and Red does not really mix very well. So if you're gonna go green, I think you should not go Trinity Drones. Just get like one, hmm. Yeah, that's kind of awkward. Like, what are you spending your red on? I guess the endotherm kit. But you don't really want any tarsiers or electrovores, so the animus is kind of a wasted investment in that case. Salivanth. Salivanth? Hey, a plus five set. That doesn't happen too often. Uh, looks... I don't know if you guys have seen Deadeye. It's a two blue unit that kills drones, uh, but up to three drones. So with Energy Matrix and Deadeye, I think we rush for, like, two blue high econ, and, like, a bunch of our drones are going to get killed, and it's going to degenerate a bit. We'll, we'll switch to Tarsiers. I think that that beats a Feral Warden kind of thing. Um, especially since as player two, I can... Well, okay, I was thinking I can add some green in, but maybe that's not true. What's the, uh... 
Well, you want... So, sometimes in Dead Eye games, you want to do, like, cutting some drones to get out the two blue really quick. Like, two Blast Forges at once. But when Energy Matrix is there as well, you know it's going to be a relatively high econ game, and so you don't want to cut corners to get the Dead Eye out. These games often, like, turn into... It takes a long time for anybody to attack anyone else. Um, because you're both just rushing for Dead Eyes, and then once you have them, you're frantically trying to rebuild your drones while you build more dead eyes and you don't have space for other tech. Um, and then once sort of the dead eye swarm has died down, uh, you branch into something else like red. Um, the question here is like, am I going to add in some green? And I think probably yes on turn three I'll put in the conduit because I'll have, there's so many chances to put in green, right? Uh, that if you don't, I don't know. I just don't see a super profitable way to build a bunch of drones where cutting the conduit helps you get out an extra Blast Forge sooner. So I definitely want to build a bunch of drones, and I want to build two Blast Forges. And I want to have green eventually. And I don't think that cutting the conduit turns one... Sorry, sorry turns... Uh four and five is really going to give me a meaningful advantage in terms of getting blue out earlier. Uh, at least not one that's worth missing out on all that free green. So that's sort of the plan, is we're gonna triple drone conduit next turn, probably triple drone blast forge after that. Alright, my opponent disagrees that this is a high econ set. That should be fun. But he's still going blue. I think if you're not gonna go high econ, you should go red. But all right. Or, or green, right? Because Feral Warden is like a high pressure kind of unit. Um, and you might want to get that before you start on the red. Although, mm, I don't know. It's not my build, so I don't have to figure out the details. But it seems to me like you would like to not start blue, whatever you start with. Like, what does he even build here? Steel Splitter, I guess. Fine, I'll lose an NG. In the meantime, I've used him to build a bunch of drones. Oh no, he's just not using it. Okay, so he's going straight into Dead Eyes. So here's the thing, I could do the same, and I have more drones than he does, and a conduit. Because I got to build three drones last turn and one this turn, instead of two each turn. That puts me a little bit ahead. So I could do this. And then build like two Dead Eyes and two drones? That seems pretty good. Um, alternatively, I can do this, and one Blast Forge, but one Blast Forge is not really doing anything right now, right? So we're just gonna go like this. And we're all just gonna spam Dead Eyes and try to kill a bunch of drones, and then the real game will start. Uh, where the real game is probably like, get an energy matrix and some red. And speaking of which, with the red, we'll pick up a Colossus eventually. It's pretty convenient with the tech that we have at the moment. Yeah, I'm just going to keep droning. We're going to be losing a lot of drones to these dead eyes, and there's not any pressure, any attackers trying to force me to do anything but drone. Right, the dead eyes are taking out drones, but they're going to do that whether I drone or not, so I might as well get some free drones. Not free, but like, low pressure. Um, and maybe I'll even be able to tech into something real, uh, like red, a little bit early? Yeah, okay, so he's, he's sort of, um, that's interesting. Because you kind of want to build... Feral Wardens or something, right? You, you, well, I don't know. You want to be spending all your blue on Dead Eyes, so you don't really want to build an Energy Matrix right away. You also don't want to go, like, third blue to get you... Uh, like, walls while this attack is ongoing. So this, this attack sort of threatens me in, in a non-trivial way. Um, in fact, I, I'm just losing an Engineer here, of course. He, 
This isn't a threat of an attack, it's actually an attack. I was thinking that, like, oh yeah, the Animus means he can build attackers next turn. But he also built one this turn, so he can just attack me. Um, that's an interesting thought. I could, like, cut these and build a Gauss Cannon or something, but... I'd rather just do this. I guess I could... No. he's a... He can actually build defense if he wants. I can't. Not if I'm building the Deadeye. So what I'm gonna do is just, like, assume he builds one, maybe two more attackers, and I'm gonna soak on the Feral Warden next turn. Probably. And start using that to use Feral Wardens as, like, pseudo-walls uh, while I continue building dead eyes, And then when they've finished, you know, quote, absorbing by taking two damage, they sort of transform into Tarsiers. In a way. And if he doesn't attack anymore, then... I don't know, maybe I'll just build Tarsiers or something? But we have a pretty substantial... Well, it's not that substantial. Two, uh, a two drone lead. Oh, perfect. Thank you so much for that Gauss charge. That's exactly what I needed to give me an excuse to build a Feral Warden. And just keep droning. I almost forgot to click the Dead Eyes. Uh, yeah, so now we can soak onto the Feral Warden, who becomes a Tarsier and threatens some attack. Indeed, we'll, we'll perform an attack. Um... I could build a Gauss Charge here, but that threatens him with two attack, which is exactly the amount he would like to be getting. I'd rather attack him for one, where it's sort of awkward. He has to choose whether to defend it or not, like he did to me. I don't think I want an Engineer here. Yeah. I have, like, a lot more green than I need right now, but it's all gonna, like, in the end game, turn into force fields, and it's gonna be great. We're probably going to exhaust the drone supplies, by the way, this game. We won't have a lot of drones left at the end of it, because the opponent's killed 12 of them. But uh, I guess that leaves us with what? Uh, 27 minus 12 is 15 drones? Is like the most we can ever have in this game? Or maybe 16. Uh, I guess I'm player 2, so... Sorry. 27, not 26. Yes, because I'm player 2. Minus 12 is 15 drones, is the most I can have, and 14 is the most he can have once all the dead eyes are done. Alright, so he's building a rhino to absorb. Fine, I guess. Um, I'm gonna want probably some more defense, like NGs or something. Uh, maybe this drone should have been engineers, actually. Or, because I, I want to soak onto another Feral Warden, but he has a bit too much attack for me to comfortably soak all of it this coming turn. He's really throwing a lot of Gauss charges at me, which does not seem right. So I'm just going to build the last Deadeye here. And... Build a Feral Warden, which actually soaks perfectly, right? Tarsier, NG. Not building a drone, because we're going to be defending with this stuff. Now, next turn, we'll get more defense, because the Deadeye is ready. And... We'll have an NG up, and we can build an energy matrix. So I feel like I'm in a pretty okay position here, just because I'm so far up on drones, and not that far behind in attack. But I am behind in attack, no question there. I think I just bought the right kind of attack. I think it was a mistake to go with Gauss Cannons and Tarsiers, when Feral Wardens are such a convenient defender when you can't afford to spend any blue defending. We're going to transition out of Feral Wardens into blue pretty soon. But in the meantime, we got two Tarsiers that were kind of like free walls, right? That's amazing. So is this uh, exploitable? Four, five, six. Oh, he's definitely attacking for exactly six, which is perfect. We just lose the Deadeye. All right. So in the meantime, I feel like I want an NG, but I also want a Tarsier. So maybe I'll build a Tarsier. Because look, look how few drones he has. He can only build $7 worth of stuff per turn, and I can build 12. And in terms of attack, we're similar, right? He has five, I have four-ish. So I, th I think I have the lead, in addition to my vast reserves of green. So I'm feeling okay. 
I just want to make sure I'm not missing something. Like, I'd love to have one more engine here somehow to let me go, like, drone some more. But I think that I just need to be comfortable with the number of drones I have and build attackers to threaten him. I guess, on the other hand, my attackers are not doing anything at all yet. Right? I've had to lose a Deadeye, and he hasn't. I don't know. I think that's okay. Like, how much longer can he build just attackers? Maybe a while. Hopefully not. This time he's just killing an NG. He has less attack than he did last turn because he's lost... You know, some of it was just a Gauss charge, right? So I'm gonna drone up here. No, I'm not. That's so greedy. Let's build an NG. I'm going to need some more defenders soon, because I'm losing this NG and he's still attacking for 5 next turn. He's attacking for 5, and then the turn after, probably attacking for around 5. I'll want the NG, I think. You know what? Actually, no, I'm going to build a drone, and then if I need to, I can force field or, or hold a drone back or something. Is that right? I'm, like, these two Deadeyes are both going to be available to block, but they don't have the granularity that I need. I think I need the NG as granular defense to avoid anything bad happening to me. Hmm. While you guys were gone, and I was uh, playing against Masterbot, I did finish achieving all of the levels to unlock all of the units or whatever. So now casual play, if we play it again, uh, will indeed have all the units available. I think all these gas charges are mistakes. Like, it's not difficult for me to defend. And in fact, it's quite easy because he's telegraphing exactly how much he's going to attack. And I can just slap down an energy matrix, right? Meanwhile, he's exhausting his supply of force fields prematurely. Um, maybe I shouldn't build the energy matrix, though? I don't even need it. This is just attack. This is defending for perfect, so I can build more Tarsiers, right? Next turn, build an energy matrix when he attacks for six, seven, at most eight. Yeah, I have a perfectly fine defense to eight. Whoa, that's a mistake. You should have lost the NG. If you just pressed Q, it would it would defend better than that. Uh, I guess you could choose to lose Deadeye instead of NG if you really wanted to build a drone. I don't think building a drone is a good idea at this stage anyway, but okay. So now he's attacking for eight. We have six, seven con convenient defense. But if I do this, I, uh, have a very, mm, well, I wouldn't say comfortable. It's actually quite awkward to defend for eight this way. We have to lose the Engineer. So maybe I should not build the Tarsier. Just be comfortable with the fact that I have, like, more attack and more drones than him, and not try to get super greedy with more attack. Let's just build the NG... He's hanging for exactly eight, so we're going to lose one NG in the wall. I'm just going to build one NG, because I'll have the Deadeye available for my two. I have a one here, and I can build a three wall if I need. So I'll be as granular as necessary. I won't need a second Engineer next turn. What am I doing the turn after? What am I doing this coming turn? It's probably wall. It leaves me with six bucks. Steel Splitter? Something like that. An attacker that can also defend, because pretty soon we'll need to start defending. He's, he's still doing it. He really wants to build more drones. And I think it's just too late. You're going to have to defend with them real soon. Meanwhile, as I've mentioned many times... Alright, this time he decided to give up the energy. As I've mentioned many times, we have much more green than he does. Every single one of these drones can be a force field, whereas he's... Right, we can turn our green into one into two defense. 
he's been turning his green into one attack, uh, which is obviously not as good. Of course, he hasn't been submitting drones on doing it, I guess, so maybe it's not as awkward as it sounds. So he's attacking for eight again. I'll just build another wall. That's fine. And a steel splitter. Probably won't attack with this guy very many times before I have to start defending with him, but um, the threat of extra attack is going to give him some trouble. Like right now, he's, he's building more than he can afford to as he works through his sort of backlog of Deadeyes as free defenders. Right, The number of defenders he has available per turn has been going down. Ours has been staying roughly steady, and we built another attacker. So I'm reasonably happy with with how things are in that front. Can we exploit this somehow? If we attack for 10, he has to lose everything but this. All right, he's conceding. Cool. I don't know how to, whatever. Three consecutive victories in ranked play. Did we really win our last two games? They were so long ago for me. I don't remember. Congratulations to us. We got 2% of a single power core. Amazing. So I think we sort of already know exactly what happened in this game, but let's go over it real quick. Um, mainly, I think, like, his opening... I, I get the impression that he's sort of a new player. Um, I don't want to sound too disparaging, like, uh, by saying, oh, here's a mistake that he made and so on, in case he ends up finding this video or something. I don't want to give the impression that I'm, like, looking down on him. It just seems like he's made a few pl mistakes that we all made as new players, and that I indeed continue to make as a good player, not mm, experienced player, uh, when I'm not thinking carefully, is like, okay, so first of all, I think that this set is a high econ set, and you should build the third engineer. But it's fine to disagree with that if you want, and like, I don't know, try to build Feral Wardens or something. Tarsiers and Feral Wardens could apply some pressure, maybe. Um, I don't love going... 2NG into Blast Torch, but okay, you could make that choice too, I suppose. Um, the problem is that he 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 does he floats his blue right away as soon as he builds a Blast Torch, he doesn't use it. Um, and so, like, if nothing else, you could just do this: float the six bucks, and you can still build the two Blast Torches next turn if you decide that's what you want. Um, but then you have the option to like pivot into red if I do something totally weird, right? Like, I don't know. I guess it sort of comes out the same. If you if you build a blast forge and then waste it, it's like a waste. But likewise, it's a waste to float these six bucks and not do anything with them. So I think there's some inefficiency in this opening. It's not clear in which direction he should have wanted to resolve it. Um, but I think that that's something you should look for is notice that like you're gonna build a blast forge what are you gonna do with it nothing you could well okay so the thing you could do i guess is like cut the drones this turn just build steel splitter and another blast forge because he has what 13 bucks steel splitter and blast forge is 11. kind of awkward you're still floating two dollars but at least you're not floating a blue uh I don't know. We could analyze the opening all day long. I think it's clear that it was inefficient, but I don't know what exactly is the right way to suggest fixing that problem. I built my, I cut my one drone to build two blast forges at a time because I anticipated not wanting to build anything that cost a single blue. So why put down just one blast forge? Something, something like that might be appropriate for for my opponent. And he went Dead Eyes. Good. I think Dead Eyes the thing in this set. Dead Eyes and Energy Matrix are the things to get. But in the meantime, because everyone is just rushing to go for Dead Eyes, uh, if you're not building more attackers with, say, an Animus, uh, your opponent can just drone like crazy. Like, arguably, I should have built a fourth Engi here to drone even more, because there's such a long period of time where no one attacks and there's no punishment for overdroning. Is there a spot where I could have fit that in? Instead of the conduit, I could have actually built like a fourth NG. But if you do... Well? I didn't build a Blast Forge this turn anyway, did I? Yeah, I did. 
So I built... I actually didn't go that high econ, I guess, now that I look at it. I built three drones and then one drone, which is only slightly better than building two drones and then two drones, right? Um, but it left me with the ability to continue triple droning while the dead eyes were going on. That, I think, is what, here's where I actually started going high econ, right? Previously, it was just a slightly more efficient way to get double blast forge going. And maybe at this point, I could have built another engineer. Uh, that would leave me with... I could build two more drones instead of that Animus. I don't know. Like, he's, he's built a Gauss Cannon. So... But he built that after I decided whether to build 4th NG. It just didn't even occur to me. I never go 4 NG. It's like, when can you ever go 4 NGs? Um, but maybe a Deadeye game is when you can. Anyway, it, it turned out okay because I wanted to have some defense to the Gauss Cannon he built. So... Overdroning would have been a problem. Um, and I think... Like, okay, was his Gauss Cannon great? Maybe. Like, he's got all this green that he's saving up for something... And you might as well, while you're floating some money, make use of it to build attackers against an opponent who does not look capable of defending. And indeed, the Gauss Cannon killed an engineer and forced me to react. So maybe, like, I made... I, I, I thought it was not a great play at the time, but, you know, it it stops me from going, like, fourth NG. It stops me from going, like, building a bunch of attackers. But I think that if you're building Gauss Cannon, Gauss Charge is very wrong. Um, it's... Like, how do I want to defend the one attack from his Gauss Cannon? I don't want to build an energy matrix or a wall. I want to spend all of my blue on Dead Eyes. Um, and so if I choose to defend against it, I guess put it this way. If he attacks for one, I have two sort of like okay options. Don't defend, lose another NG, or defend with, say, a Feral Warden, which is, like, sort of overreacting. It loses only one health instead of two. It's sort of like some of it is wasted. If he attacks for one, I have sort of two okay choices, right? If he attacks for two, I have one bad choice and one good choice. And so I should obviously go for the good choice of putting up a Feral Warden. This is, I think, like, a kind of play that less experienced players, and me, also, I miss this all the time, uh, should be on the lookout for is, like, how will my opponent want to react to my plays? What does my opponent want to do on his turn? Whether in reaction to the attacks I'm making or into how his economy is taking shape or whatever. And look for a way to make your opponent's turn more awkward. Here, my turn would be more awkward if he were attacking for less. So cut this Gauss charge, and then maybe on a later turn, build one more Gauss charge than you did if you think Gauss Charges are the way to go. And, you know, they might as well be. You have plenty of green. You know, maybe Gauss Charges are fine, but not right now. And I think the two Tarsiers here are great, excellent play. Like, can't argue with that. I think my Feral Warden here is excellent. Can't argue with that either. Um, it means I can't build as many attackers, but haha, gotcha, the Feral Warden's an attacker too. Now, it's attacking next turn, which is not important, right? My opponent's just going to absorb it, but it forces my opponent to build an Absorber, right? A Rhino. He didn't want to build that Rhino, I'm sure. And in fact, I think he was wrong to build the Rhino. It should have been a Feral Warden when they're in the set. That's usually better. Because uh, it's a... Rhino gets to absorb for one health twice, maybe. And it gets to attack for tw one twice, maybe. Um, Feral Warden gets to absorb for two once, and then it gets to attack forever. Which is like great, unless you're gonna need compared to Rhino is a lot better, unless you need to defend with it right away. Uh, after like okay, yes, he needs to defend with it now, but does he need to defend with it again soon? No, not really. So that's why I think that the Feral Warden. Oh, he ended up not building the Rhino. Okay, fine. So he chose not to defend my Feral Warden. Um, this is another example of what I was just talking about of making your opponent's turn awkward. He doesn't want to overreact to one attack by building something awkward like a Rhino, but he doesn't want 
to ignore one attack and lose an engineer. He's left with two not very good choices. Um, so, like, I could have, for example, pressured a bit more if instead of this, um, this Tarsier I had built, I don't know, a Rhino or another Feral Warden, right? Uh, I could have threatened to attack for two this turn, but then he would be, like, feeling a lot better about building a Feral Warden. Uh, so by attacking for just one and absorbing, I sort of make my turn convenient and his turn inconvenient. So I think that this game kind of has two main points, I guess. The first one is that, like, in the opening, you need to recognize that it's a 3-NG three, three set, or else try to prove that it's not. Um, just, and, 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 like, try to cut the inefficiencies out of your opening, um, whether that's going for a triple drone or not. Um, triple NG, I should say. And the second point is a number of sort of small tactical mistakes in the mid-game here. This is arguably still the early game, though, I guess. Um, I think he was behind already. My drones are gonna carry me. Yes, he's ahead in Dead Eyes, but like only by half a turn. And I'm making several more gold than he is per turn. My He has more attackers, that's true, I guess. Um, but while he's been building these attackers that only attack, I've been able to build these attackers that absorb his early threats and are more efficient in the late game. He's been throwing away his green. If, if it comes to that, he's going to have trouble defending with force fields. I think, like, overall his game plan, once we got to the mid game, was fine. You know, Build some attackers. Animus builds efficient attackers. They're really the only thing in the set that does. I don't really buy most of the Gauss charges, but the Gauss cannon and the Tarsiers are fine. Um, I guess he misabsorbed a couple of times, right? Once maybe, was it? Um, he... Uh, yeah, the first time I attacked for five, he chose to lose Deadeye instead of Engineer, so he could keep droning, but I don't know. On the one hand, I feel like it's way too late to drone, but on the other, if you don't, how are you ever going to win? So maybe he just has to try for it or something. I don't know. Doesn't seem right to me. Uh, but it's like, you know, hard to argue with any of his choices because he's clearly behind at this point. Um, he's attacking for a little bit more, but that's because he keeps buying Gauss charges. And I have substantially more drones, so I can afford to actually do stuff. So, you know, a lot of his choices here didn't really matter that much, and I, I can't say, you know, what was wrong about them. So those were the main, main, main points, I guess. I like, was my game perfect? No, obviously not. But I, I find it hard to, to see a spot where I missed something. Um, the main one that I... wonder about is whether a fourth NG at some point instead of this conduit could have been good. Because I ended up spending very little of my green. But on the other hand, I did spend two of it on very, very valuable uh, Feral Wardens, and having all that green left over at the end made me a lot more comfortable about how the end game was going to go. So I think I prefer that to going fourth NG, but I should have at least thought about it. And then in the end game, like... I don't know. Maybe some of my Tarsiers could have been Rhinos or something, and I over-optimized for the long game when what I needed was to pressure more. Hard to say. Like, I, I felt like anything I was doing here would win, and so it was, I wasn't looking super hard for the absolute best play. But I did something at least that I was... Mm, maybe proud of is an overstatement, but that I was happy with was, like, planning, okay, he's attacking for eight, which attackers am I losing? How much more defense will I need next turn? What am I building next turn? Should I get the Engineer now? Will I need the granularity? Will I need the two dollars next turn? Um, and I think I made one wrong decision along that line at some point. I don't remember what it was. Maybe it was this, actually. Like, the very last time I defended. I built the Steel Splitter, 
uh, when he was continuing to attack for 8, and I had shown that I can defend 8 by just building NG wall every turn. Right, I'm losing nothing while he attacks for 8, but he's losing something while I attack for 9. So... Maybe instead of trying to get aggressive with this Steel Splitter, I should just build like NG Drone or something to say, look, I, we can continue like this all day, but I can drone behind it. When I, when I played Steel Splitter instead, I sort of like leave myself open to the possibility of being exploited somehow when I lose NG Wall and I don't have a Granular Defender next turn. And has the Steel Splitter really helped? Not a lot. So... That might have been better. I felt I could get away with a Steel Splitter, but I think it would have been better to see that I don't need to get away with anything. Just build NG Drone and say, look, this is a game that's clearly going in my favor. Okay, well, cool. So we spent this episode on two matches, one of which was not really a match at all. Hey, look, it says rank 193. Does that mean we're on the leaderboard? Is that how that works? Leaderboard go to... Hello? How do I scroll? Here we go. Yeah! There we are! Amazing! I recognize some of these people. Like, Celerity uh, played a lot back in the open beta... Or the, in the, the Kickstarter days. And, like, helped, helped promote the game a bunch. Um, it's cool that he is still on here, even with his minus 200 and whatever rating penalty. <laughs> Shows he's clearly a much better player than I am. Right, like he was up in the 1700s, I guess. But we knew that. We knew he was a better player. Anyway, we, we played sort of two matches uh, this episode, but of course the first one was just like... <sighs> cruelly cut short, b just before it got interesting. And the second one, I think, was pretty cool. Uh, mm, I think it was fairly textbook, and I hope that you guys enjoyed the in-depth analysis of what my opponent could improve, and a little bit more detail of the decisions that I was already explaining during the game about why I was making my plays. But uh, we're not going to try to get a third game in here. We'll try to try to go 3-0 and in the arena and finish off our ticket in the next episode. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.